come and take control. Hi to everyone, especially our Kirk kids. Uh, this first part of a new series really is to help explain what we're thinking about that day, but also to to give you something to think about, perhaps something to do over over the next wee while. So our theme for the grown-ups is, is the Holy Spirit. Now, as you know, we always talk about God as Father, and we talk about Jesus as being part of God. Then there's God as Spirit, and that three parts of who God is. And we do a lot of talking about God as Father, and we do a lot of talking about Jesus as well. But this series is focusing on someone that we don't talk as quite so much about, and that's the Holy Spirit. So we're going to think about that. And it can be really hard, and it can be really uh, challenging to think that... Uh, God is three and yet one, and one and three, and, and how does that all work, and how does it all fit together, and how what does that mean for us? <clears throat> so that's what we are going to be looking at, um, and to help us think about that, to help you explore that a little bit for yourselves, what I'm going to encourage you to do over the next few weeks is to build up a collage, a series of pictures that are connected, uh, and as you do that, to think about what we're talking about, and to see where it all fits in for you as well. So the first part is to have a central picture that's of you. Now you could do a photograph, you could just do a drawing, you could do whatever you like really, but just to have a central image of you. And from that, <coughs> draw a line that connects that picture to another picture, so either on a great big piece of paper or a number of little ones that are joined together, to think about who your best friend is and to either get a picture or draw a picture of them and connect them together. Because what we are really trying to explore over these weeks is that understanding that God wants to be our best friend and a 
lot of the things we think about, about friendship, God brings to us through Jesus and through the Spirit. So that's our starting point. There's a picture of yourself and a picture of your best friend and join them together. You can do it any way you like uh, and look at this as a long-term art project at home to fill up your, your time. I know you guys are all just back at school and I hope that's all going well and you're all keeping safe and so you'll have homework and it might all be a bit busy but it's nice to take a little bit of time just to do something a bit different. So that's where you're going to start and we'll take it on from there next week. So for now, can we say a short prayer together? Father God, we thank you for holidays. We thank you for the opportunities to do different things. We know that this year with lockdown has been a bit weird and a bit different. But we thank you that we're back at school and a chance to meet our friends and be in our classes and, and to learn new things and to do new things. And as we go back into school, we pray that you would keep us safe and our friends safe, the school safe and our community safe. And we pray that you will help us to grow in our understanding and in our knowledge of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as you did in the rebellion during the times of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me. Though for forty years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has sinful, unbelieving hearts that turn away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. Amen. Today we start a new series and we're looking at the theme of the present presence of God, considering the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of all believers. But before we begin that, it's worth just commenting on where we are as a church with regard to reopening. 
I know we all look forward to the, the day when we can reconvene within the church and, and worship together and spend time together and enjoy what we've had. And hopefully that won't be too far away. But as you'll appreciate, with so many of our church family shielding and being in at-risk categories, we have to be careful about not moving too quickly. <coughs> and with schools just recommencing, we feel it's right just to let that bed down and let everything settle to be the good neighbour to our community and not just create a, a circumstance that can aggravate a problem, a potential problem. So we're going slowly and I know it might be too slowly for some and it might be too quick for others. So we hope we've got the balance about right but we will keep people informed as we move on. But today we, we begin our series on the present presence of God, a people of the Spirit. We are a Trinitarian church we proclaim God as being Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And still within that, one God. And all that can be a bit mind-melting. The church over generations has done a lot of teaching and thinking about God as Father and as Son. But one area that may feel more uncomfortable with is God as Spirit. We are encouraged to worship God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. And as part of this series, there'll be a slide up at the end with all the Bible references, so you can look them up yourself. Jesus also promised his followers another helper who would come and teach them and be with them. That's in John 16, 7. And that helper is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of the persons of the Trinity, one of the parts of God that, that we see as having a, a distinct identity. It's how God manifests himself to his people. How he can be a present presence with all of us all the time. I don't know if it's because we feel a bit uncomfortable speaking about the Spirit that we, we tend to muddy the waters. And we can use the generic term God, or the Spirit of God, or the Spirit of Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is referred to by Jesus as something other than him. Separate, yet still part of God. We seem to be more comfortable talking about God as Father and as Son in Jesus. Not so much about the Holy Spirit. So this short series is about exploring a little bit of the person of the Spirit within the Trinity of God and how the Spirit is the very wellspring of our Christian lives. In the Hebrew Scriptures, the word used to describe the Spirit is ruach or breath, the very breath of God, the breath that fills us without which we cannot exist. They talk about the Spirit as wisdom, the very wisdom of God. And that's in Ecclesiastes. But the word wisdom in Greek is Sophia. And we, you'll get that from Proverbs 1.20 and 2.6. Jesus talks about sending another to his followers once he's ascended. So from the very beginning, the Holy Spirit is separate from the Father and the Son, but shares the same life as Father and Son. The Spirit is given a clear individual character, and with that, a ministry within the lives of the believers. It is this that we're going to explore just a little bit over the next few weeks. And that might confirm our existing understanding, or it might enhance what we already know of the Holy Spirit. And as we think about this and reflect on what it can mean for each of us, 
I would invite you to ask God the Father to be present in our reflection and to Jesus to reassure us and for the Spirit to breathe new life into our understanding. There will be quite a few Bible references and as I say we'll put them up on a screen just at the end. As a framework, as a scaffolding, if you like, on which to hang our reflections, I would invite you to dwell through the week, through your own personal reflection times, on, on two readings, John 15 and 16 and Acts 2 and 3. The John reading is Jesus talking about the coming of the Spirit. And Acts 2 and 3 is the Pentecost story, when we see that first new work of God amongst his people. These will kind of create a, a, a basis, a foundation for, for where we will take our thinking. During this period of lockdown, well I don't know about you, but I've found it tough at times. Feeling isolated, a bit cut off. And you get the same kind of feeling with the disciples in the gap between the cross and the resurrection. Then, then Jesus appears, John 20, 19. And they think, that's great, everything is back to the way things were. But it's not the same. Once again, they were in between the, mov the movements and the moments of God's action. Like that pause between breaths. They had experienced firsthand the God with us, Emmanuel. Jesus the Lord, and then he's gone again. But the promise is that this was not the end. The full and final action of God in the world. There was more to come. But a promise that something greater would come through the giving and the breath and the life-giving flow of the Spirit that will be with us in all times. Not limited in physical time or by geography, but just free. Free to be with all of us, all the time. The tangible presence of God dwelling with and within his people. And not limited to the mountain top or to the tabernacle, but all over his creation. The curtain in the temple was torn asunder, as we know, Matthew 15, 35. A visual reminder. God's out and he's not going back in the box. But just as Jesus gave intimate access to God in a way that we can connect with and relate to, God sought a way to be really connected to each of us, each one of his children through the present presence of his Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Many parts of the church are uncomfortable with the Spirit. Perhaps it's the language, the old words, the Holy Ghosts. Ghosts and ghouls are connected with horror stories and scary things, generally not good. God as the King, the Great King and Father of all, that as an idea is easier to get your head around. Jesus isn't a problem either. We have Bible records and stories of what he did. And we can connect with him as a person. Which I think that's why God chose that way to, to come to us. But the spirit is not so straightforward. Like electricity. We can get that the spirit is powerful and brings great blessing to our lives. But it's a bit strange, a bit unusual to our thinking and our experience. We live in a more rational, scientific world. Paul reminds us that Jesus 
And so God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Romans 13, 8. And so the promise of the Spirit, the presence of the Spirit, the work of the Spirit as recorded in Scripture is the same then, now and forever. However, in our prayers, in the words of our hymns, in our songs, we continually ask the Spirit to be with us and in us. But I wonder if as we say that and pray that and think that, to a degree we want that, but on our terms. So our series really is about refining or refreshing our thinking and understanding and looking to establish a biblical framework of the personhood and purpose of the Holy Spirit. We will touch briefly on the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, but these are themes that deserve series on their own. So this is more of a general overview series. Perhaps for today, we can simply consider the name, the being that is the Spirit. The terms Father and Son confer a certain identity. We get that, we understand that. And with that, a bit of nature, a bit of personality. But the Spirit or the Holy Spirit, that's different. We know, and if we really think about it, we understand that God is neither male or female. He's simply God. But our language uses male and female signifiers. There's no neutral term apart from it. And it, we tend to use that as descriptor of an inanimate object. And it doesn't feel right to refer to a person as it. We noted earlier that the Spirit, as the wisdom of God, as recorded in Scripture, is called Sophia. And in the Greek, that's feminine. So in God, as I see it, there is fullness of male and female in undivided unity. Our church tradition tends to refer to God as he, male. But that in itself divides and limits God. In talking about the Spirit as a person within the Godhead, it is natural to use the pronouns of our language. And we would tend, as the default is within English, to use masculine ones. He, him. So though it might be a bit more clumsy, I'm going to challenge that a little bit. Because I'm going to try and avoid using those uh, masculine pronouns. And if I have to, because of the way of the structure, I'm going to use both. I know this might sound a bit strange to our ear, but I hope that it opens up a fresh perspective, not only to the Spirit, but of God as one in Trinity, encapsulating full masculinity, full femininity, all of what it is to be human and real. So readily our church nationally and the Church of Christ internationally seems to find reasons to divide and fracture and fissure over issues of gender, over issues of sexuality, of identity. And yet it's the complete opposite of who God is. God is all male, all female, all things. He is complete and whole. And wants us to understand him that way. So as we reflect on the Spirit, I hope that it fills out some of perhaps our unstructured thinking on the nature of God. So it's going to be a bit of a journey. And I hope you'll come along with that and journey with me. But I think that's enough talk for today. This is really just about setting the scene for where we are going.
still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the and loving God that is Father, Son and Spirit we cannot hope to fully understand the nature of your mystery until we behold you face to face in your glory but give us inquiring minds and open hearts to search for your truth wherever we are may we find you a present presence with us through our struggles and our triumphs, through our sadnesses and through our laughter. May we find you present in our lives and in our homes. May we find you at work in our relationships. Father, we pray for those we love and care for, laid low through illness or stress and struggle at this moment. We pray that you would be their strength, be their comfort, be all that they need. We pray for families feeling under pressure through these difficult days. Father, be their guide, be their hope. We pray that the leadership of our nation would find ways to express love, compassion, fairness to all and for all 
and we would find a path through these darker days to a new and glorious dawn. Indeed, we pray for all nations struggling today, those going through political strife, economic difficulties or natural disaster. And we pray that you would raise up men and women of integrity to lead those nations to a new future, a good future. Father, we pray for your church, your church in Kalern and in this land, that it would find ways still to share your gospel, even though buildings are closed and services are limited, if they are happening at all. But still the gospel shall prevail. Still we shall proclaim the glory of God to all who will listen. Give us mouths to speak your name, but give us lives to reflect your glory. Hear our prayers, the ones we say and the ones we feel. In this time of quiet, Lord, hear us. All of our prayers we enfold in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and always. Amen.
Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen.